I'm back, and I'm here to blow your mind. This is Art Explains. As it turns out, the field of whale anatomy includes some of the funniest words ever uttered in the English language. Today we're talking about blowholes, baleen, whalebone, vestigial organs, melons, spermaceti, and the junk, all of which can be found on cetaceans, the animal order containing dolphins, porpoises, and of course, whales. There are lots of species of cetaceans, more specifically like 80 to 90? It's hard to be sure, partly because so many of them spend their lives in the deep ocean where it's difficult to get an accurate count and differentiate species. All known species of cetaceans can be divided into two suborders. Odontoceti, the toothed whales, and Mysticeti, the baleen whales. The toothed whale suborder contains all porpoises and dolphins, as well as orcas, beaked whales, and the sperm whale. Of the toothed whales, the narwhal is arguably the toothiest, with one, sometimes two, ten-foot-long teeth jutting out of their face. I don't envy the Odontoceti orthodontist. Have... have you been flossing? I thought narwhals were a myth. You're thinking of unicorns. No, no, I've personally met every other horned animal on this planet, and I've never seen narwhals at our meeting of the Horny Alliance. Okay, first of all, you're going to want to consider changing that name, and secondly, it's not a horn, it's a tooth. I just made a flossing joke. Oh, alright, carry on. The baleen whale suborder contains blue, gray, humpback, and other whales. The baleen itself is like the bristles of a brush attached to the upper plate of the whale's mouth. These whales suck in a large amount of water, expanding the throat pouch, and then strain the water out through the bristles. By the way, these semi-flexible and yet rigid baleen structures were what were used to make whalebone corsets, not actual bone. The baleen was used to bone the corset, meaning to provide support, but no actual whale bones were involved. Wacky. It might surprise you to learn that baleen whales have two blowholes, while the toothed whales have the classical one. Baleen whales have two sort of slit-shaped blowholes that sit next to each other in a V-shape that's sort of reminiscent of nostrils. Of course, that's pretty much what they are. Over time, evolutionary processes took the nose and the forehead of the whale and essentially made them the same thing. Kind of like this one guy I knew in high school. He got the worst head colds. Of course, the last person to call him a whale got headbutted into a trench. Anyway, the blowhole opens when the whale flexes and closes when he relaxes. So, as a whale surfaces, it flexes, forcefully expelling a hot combination of air and carbon dioxide, mucus, and water vapor. Not liquid water, as a certain popular animated movie about a fish incorrectly shows. It isn't until this mixture hits the cold air on the outside of the whale that it immediately condenses and forms the characteristic blow, or spout, of water. Whales don't shoot liquid water out of their blowholes for much the same reason that humans try to keep liquid out of their lungs. In fact, if you were swallowed by a whale, like in the aforementioned movie about a fish, you would either be swallowed or spat out, because the digestive system does not connect with the respiratory system in a whale, unlike in many other mammals. This way, whales don't have to worry about swallowing water or breathing air. This way, whales don't have to worry about swallowing air or breathing in water. Yes, that's right. That should sound appealing to any of us who have ever choked on our own spit. The positioning of the blowholes by species is actually unique enough that, with practice, you can actually tell species apart by the blow. Particularly easy to identify by blow alone is the sperm whale. These guys have one blowhole on the left side of their head that shoots off at a characteristic 45 degree angle. They have a matching nasal passage on the right side of their head, but it doesn't break the surface of the skin, making it entirely useless. This is just one example of a vestigial organ in a whale. Vestigial organs are body parts that were once useful, but have since become entirely or almost entirely useless for their original purpose, such as the appendix in humans. Because they evolved from land-dwelling mammals, whales still have a vestigial pelvis and leg bones that are embedded so far in their blubber that they're entirely useless. Because these vestigial parts are neither particularly helpful nor harmful, they just kind of stick around like a decorative knick-knack. Sperm whales are also interesting for a couple of organs in their head, called the spermaceti and the junk. The spermaceti is essentially a giant sac in the whale's head that is full of a waxy liquid called sperm oil. When processed correctly, it doesn't freeze in the cold, and was once very useful for lubricating machine parts. It was also used to make sperm wax candles and burned as lamp oil, which burned well, but burned smelly. One male sperm whale could yield 100 barrels of this oil from the spermaceti. Below the spermaceti is the junk, which is a compartmented area containing even more waxy oil. The reason it is called the junk is because whalers typically couldn't be bothered to slice through these cartilage walls to harvest this smaller amount of oil, and they believed it to be of lesser quality. Of course, just to make things confusing, sometimes the entire forehead of the whale was referred to as the junk. When harvesting from a whale mid-ocean, 
Whalers would often sever the junk from the bones and haul it on board, where they would sometimes literally have a guy crawl into the blubber and harvest the oil with a bucket. I'm sure the first day of that job was awkward. Okay, Johnson, we've sliced off his junk. Now we need you to climb in there with this bucket and bring us any sperm oil that you find. Ex- excuse me? Just go cut through the blowhole so we can drain the sperm's junk of fluid. I'm not really comfortable. Dang, nabbit, Johnson, I am the ranking seaman here, so you go jump on the back of that sperm and squeeze that junk for all it's got. Actually, it's not just sperm whales that have these oils. They just happen to be big enough to attract whalers looking for a profit. Dolphins have something in the head called the melon, which is analogous to the junk, and it's full of waxes and partitions. It is believed that these oils and structures in the heads of various cetaceans are used for echolocation and other vocalizations. The sperm whale, for example, uses these noises to determine what's in front of him, since his eyes are located on the sides of his head. These sounds are apparently sometimes strong enough to be heard by nearby divers, like bass drums at a concert. Another reason that sperm whales might have such a big junk is that it's useful for ramming things. That's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Besides fighting each other with them occasionally, sperms have sunk ships with their noggins, and the partitions in the junk seem to help dissipate the impact. Captain Ahab experienced this directly, getting rammed by Moby Dick's junk. Thanks for watching this hilarious word-filled episode of Art Explains. If you want more, please like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Take it away, Lucy! Hey everyone, click some of these buttons if you want more Art Explains. The ones up here take you to another episode, and the ones down here are the various social media sites. Thanks again for tuning in. See you next time. Deeper, Johnson. You need to go deeper.